What's up everybody? It is the evening of December 1st and I'm set up here in our cabin overlooking my brassica food plot back here in the corner and I have a brassica food plot I planted right here behind me. The deer have to come out and cross this whole green field to get to this food plot behind me but I have confirmation that a couple of our shooter bucks have been feeding in there. None, none of which are during the day but uh, last night the buck I call Ghost was in there right after dark, so, you know, I really don't think they're going to be moving during daylight hours yet. It's going to take some snow to make that happen, but, you know, you never know. I'm going to be here, and if he does come out before dark, I will shoot him. Uh, the G2 buck is also using this food plot, and another buck is using this food plot, three of which I'll shoot, so just going to be a matter of time. It's all just going to, we need snow. Once it gets cold and snows, we will kill one of these bucks. Just be patient, stay out of the woods, and uh, it'll happen. And one of my hit list bucks that uh, I've been hunting pretty much all year long. It's a three and a half year old. It's a buck that I had at 30 yards during archery season. I couldn't get a shot at him out here. He's dead. I just killed him. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> I knew it was just a matter of time. I've been getting pictures of him every night, a little bit closer to the light, a little bit closer to the light, coming out into my food plot out here. And tonight, he finally made a mistake. I can't believe Kaylee's been hunting with me every freaking day, practically. And the one day, she's got to work tonight. And she couldn't have, she wasn't here. Unbelievable. What a roller coaster this season's been, you know. I'm just putting in so much time and trying to do everything just perfect, you know. Hunting the wind hunting where the deer are, trying not to spook them, hunting the edges, not going in the woods. All, all the hard decisions I've been making all year, trying to put myself in a position to kill one of these bucks without pushing them out of our woods, finally paid off. And every year it's the same thing. It's the food plots. It's the Nebraska food plots that get these big bucks killed. Every single year. I'm going to give uh, Kaylee a call and uh, we'll go check this deer out. Awesome. He's an awesome buck. He's got big long brow tines. Really nice. Nice deer. I'm super thrilled with him. We'll uh, give Kaylee a call right now. Unbelievable. The freaking G2 buck, one of my other shooters, just ran across the corner of the field out here. I was just getting wrapped up and I looked up. It's still light enough to see across the field. 
I could see a deer running and just a huge rack. And I put the scope on him, I could see he's a big G2's, he's a G2 buck. Those bucks have been running together a lot in the past couple nights. Which makes sense. I killed Ghost right when he came out across the food plot and then the G2 buck was behind him. Unbelievable. We'll uh, save him for Kaylee one of these nights. What a night. Well folks, as you can see, I ended up having a pretty successful hunt tonight and uh, killed one of uh, our hitless bucks. This is a buck that I named Ghost back in August. And the reason he was named Ghost is because I only had a couple pictures of him and I'm running almost 20 cameras, you know, in these woods over here. And uh, it was pretty amazing that he could somehow dodge all my cameras and only get a couple pictures of him. Anyways, one of the one of the guys that hunts one of the neighboring properties to this woods had a lot of pictures of him and we, we compared pictures and stuff, but that's how he got his name Ghost. And Ghost honestly shouldn't even be alive right now. I had him at 30 some yards during archery season and uh, just wasn't able to get a shot at him. He kind of got to the edge of the field working toward one of my food plots and I just couldn't get leaned out far enough to get a shot. And uh, that was all on one of my video vlogs. And I had a couple more encounters with this deer and until today obviously when I killed him. But I kind of had a game plan put together for this buck this whole past week. I had been getting lots of pictures of him on our food plot, on both my brassica food plots. I have three brassica food plots up here and he was bouncing between all three of them. Well the one down in the red brush was my earliest pictures of him. So I put the puzzle together knowing that he was obviously bedding in that red brush and uh, he would wasn't coming out to feed at all during daylight hours and the other pictures I was getting of him was first thing in the morning. It was still dark but it was like 5.30, 5.30 in the morning. So that also led me to believe that he was clearly bedding in that red brush. So the biggest thing I, uh, we did was just not touch it, you know. There's actually another buck, one of our shooters that's bedding in that brush too. Just stay out of it. Don't go in there. As long as you have food and cover, these deer will stay there and does. And uh, sure enough, he stayed there and I knew it'd just be a matter of time before he slipped up and made a mistake and came out here and he finally did and we got him killed. I shot him with my 300 wind mag. I saw, tonight I saw about nine doe and uh, this buck and then unbelievably after this buck, after I killed this buck, I was trying to call Kaylee on the phone and looked out in the field and there comes the G2 buck trotting across the field from right where this one came from. So there's still one left for you, babe. She's behind the camera over there. <laughs> but I, I'm just tickled pink between, you know, Pennsylvania, the buck I killed over on Slava's and this one. And, you know, it's amazing how hard you hunt and how perfect you try to do everything and then how easy it seems when it happens. But once again, I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, following me on the journey of uh, whitetail hunting, highly pressured deer around here. Uh, appreciate it. Yup. Got eight points. What do you think, Grandpa? Yeah. That's really nice. Very nice. Well, what Not a very you... heavy rack, but nice even one. Yup. Good long times. Yeah. What do you think? That's a good one. Yeah, it is. I was happy with them. What's it made? I bet you it's 17 to the outside. What do you say? Yeah, I'll go with that one. Wait a spot. Let's see it. Oh, 18 and a half. I'll be damned. Waiter than I thought it was. Yeah, go up, go up with that tine with it. Okay. Yeah, Look at that. 18 and a half. What do we have? 18 and a half, 18 and a half inches wide. Good deal. What? what do you think of that, Grandma? I think that's Where's pretty good. Where's your phone? Put the light on so she can see it better. That's the hardest horn you better hold up, lady. Uh <laughs> you said it, I didn't. <laughs> and it is about this. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> what do you so think, you're... Grandma? I think that's a nice one. Wow. Was he running, leaping, jumping? No, he was just kind of, he was walking actually when I shot him. 
He was heading toward the food plot. <laughs> that would almost be called the Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs>